Dan the Wheelman here, and this is the Porsche 718 Spider. And I'm looking forward to this drive today because I think it has the potential to be the best sports car in the world. is a spectacular looking thing this spider and a lot of kind of its look a lot of what makes it very different from a regular 718 is actually around the back you've got that awesome clamshell cover of the tonneau cover there very very cool i'll demonstrate the roof process in a minute you see how all that works looks really cool the kind of dual bumps they're very very classic porsche spider you have functional aero down here for the first time ever on a 718 really cool um I wouldn't call it a duckbill spoiler. That's kind of more reserved for the 911s, but it's basically, you know, the 718 equivalent of that. Looks great. Smoked tail lamps here. Looks awesome. For the Even with the top up, you've got this cool hole right here through there, which is kind of like a, like a flying buttress. This looks fantastic. Now, of course, it looks great from the front three-quarter as well. There's no question about that. It's got a fantastic stance. It looks good from almost every angle, top, up, or down. That is a very, very, very challenging feat to achieve. Porsche has nailed it with this. I have gotten so many comments about this. Tesla owners, Corolla owners, SUV owners, motorcycle owners, they've all been kind of, you know, enthralled i would say with the look of this spider everything is so cool the way you can see the steering wheel perfectly through the back window like that it's just i don't know i don't know it's such a great execution when it comes to styling that um you know you know when you know you've got a kind of a, almost a special edition vehicle like this got to make sure you knock it out of the park on all fronts and they've definitely done so when it comes to style. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a super cool and quirky sports car if it didn't have a somewhat convoluted and quirky manual folding soft top, but this definitely has that. It's a multi-step process. You wanna make sure you do it in order or else you could get in some trouble. So we start inside the cockpit. There's a switch here just below the shift lever. Flip that, that releases that super cool clamshell tonneau cover there. Get out. Make our way around back. This lifts up. How cool does that look? Spectacular. Spectacular. Put this in place manually. We'll clip it in the rest of the way once we're back inside. Close the clad shell. Make sure you like, push nice and evenly on both sides there. The latch. You've got these very cool looking fly buttress style latches. Clip in there. Test that. Make sure it holds. Go back here. Play around. Drag a little bit. There it is. In, make sure it's holding, that looks good. And there you have it. It is a bit of a complicated process, but what Porsche is saying is that don't worry about the top. Take, drop it when you first leave in the morning, go for a drive, enjoy the open air, come back, close it then. Don't worry about the top, focus on the driving. So that's what I'm gonna do. Jeremy Clarkson references aside, it really is such a great mixture of good bits, this vehicle, isn't it? Naturally aspirated four liter flat six engine. It is one of only two, count them, two current Porsche models that uh, don't have turbocharging, unless you include the Taycan. Only this and the um, GT3 don't have turbocharging at Porsche. So it's got this great flat six engine, and great sound, metallic rear wheel drive, six speed manual transmission. Absolutely, you can get a PDK in this vehicle, um, which is ridiculous as far as I'm concerned because something this beautiful, this pure, 
leads a manual transmission. 414 horsepower, 309 pound-feet of torque. That number goes up to 317, I believe, once you select the PDK automatic transmission. I've got the six-speed manual here. But more than that, unlike previously, for this year, the Spider is very much a Cayman GT4 with the roof cut off. That means you've got the crazy, you got the stiffer chassis tuning here, suspension tuning, the steering is different, you got the um, got that great four liter engine constantly howling behind you, which is a sound that, if you're lucky enough to experience in person, good for you, but it's one that you've probably lived with for years growing up playing video games and stuff, and it never, ever, ever gets old. So this is very much a Cayman GT4. It's got, for the first time ever, it's got functional rear, um, underbody um a rear underbody diffuser for aero you got that wing we talked about before this is a really really focused gt or sports car this thing it really is uh tightened all the nuts and bolts have been tightened all the best ways to give you incredible turn in great throttle response as naturally aspirated engines do and all that great stuff there is so much to like here which is why on paper i say this looks like it could be one of the best, if not the best, sports car in the world. And, and of course, all the little stuff that just makes a specialized Porsche like this just that, so special. These nylon poles here on the doors, which are a light sa a weight saving measure. The fact I've actually got to insert and turn a key on the left hand side of the steering column as opposed to the right hand side, which of course is a callback to the Le Mans days where vehicles named Spider actually have had a lot of success, or named Porsche Spider, I should say, have had success. And it's just it's just that you got the sport chrono clock on top, perfect seating position, steering wheel with absolutely nothing on it except for a horn and three spokes. That's it. No buttons, no dongs. The Boxster Spider does not have the adjustable drive mode wheel like um, the 911, for example, does. And everything else too. Um, useless cup holders, which is a Porsche staple these days. So much great stuff. Sport seats. Alcantara insert, very supportive. I am not a thin person, but these seats still work for me. They are not digging into my sides or underneath my thighs or anything like that. This is absolutely perfect once you step into it. And I don't care if you think I'm jumping to conclusions or if I'm being, being cliched. Once you step in to this vehicle, you are, you're in the money. You are in the money because, well, we talked before, well, we'll talk, sorry, in a minute about what, how much in the money you actually are. But anyway, it's so great. It's just so fantastic. And that's just first impressions. That's just when you first sit in it. That's just a rundown of the really cool elements that come together in this vehicle. Wait till you actually start driving it. Ah, yes, the Porsche interior. What a perfect spot to be. Great seating position. Three gauges here. Tack in the middle. Speedometer on the left and your trip computer on the right, but who cares? Sport chrono clock on top. Manual transmission. I have an infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, and I guess I'll use it a bit, but come on, that's not what I'm here for. What an awesome, awesome cockpit. But of course, it doesn't, it's not free. The seats I'm in are like 3,000 bucks. The Bose audio system's like 1,100 bucks. This Alcantara... Um, storage bin cover with Porsche stamped on it is like $400 to get that just for a cover for a storage cover that's kind of crazy um, but you know as and of course you've got the classic Porsche cup holders got to mention those these kind of chintzy things that are here only probably because Porsche USA said they needed them anyway um, it's not inexpensive after sure but as my wife says you know it's a Porsche it's priced at what people are going to pay and she's right smart girl Ah, uh, yes, so out on the road now. Those power figures I spoke about before, 414 horsepower, 309 pound-feet of torque. That means, that means that on the horsepower front, this has as much as a 911, which is pretty awesome stuff. Base 911, but still, that's a big deal in my book. And that's great, but as I set down the road here, I'm starting to think more and more, it's almost what this vehicle doesn't have that makes it so special. And Porsche has kind of done this for a while and they've gotten away with some pretty ridiculous stuff like paying to have your air conditioner removed, for example, in some cases. Um, but that's the thing. 
doesn't have any proper door pulls. Nylon, it's got these nylon kind of like straps instead. I don't have any heated seats here. No blind spot system. No lane keep assist system. My steering wheel has no dongles or wheels or anything on it. Certain 718s are available with that Sport Corrado package, which gets you the adjustable drive modes. I don't have that. I don't even have adjustable drive modes. I, all, I, all I have here is custom stuff. I can choose the louder exhaust, choose to play with the suspension, have a have a, a auto blip on downshift, traction control off, stability control off, and so on. But I picked that all on my own. There are no baked in driver modes here. This doesn't have any of that because it is such a focused performance car. That's what it's all about. You get the feeling that, I mean, I'm surprised I even have a climate control system here at all. You get the feeling that if Porsche had their way, they would have put none of that in here. None of it, including the backup camera and the infotainment display here, because this is a focused driver's car. And that's what the Spider is about for this year. You know, Perfect 10s are pretty rare. I know I never got them in school, so I'm not about to give any of them away now. A little bit of Schadenfreude there for you. Um, so, yes, I guess you could say that ours have some very slight shortcomings. I guess the main one is that while this is one of the, this is like one of the priciest 718s you can get, uh, it's not the lightest. The standard 718 is actually lighter. It's got a smaller engine, of course, than this does. Uh, so it's a little bit lighter. Um, the infotainment display is a bit on the small side, but really uh, the backup camera is a bit fish-eyed and weird looking, okay? And I guess as much as I like, and there's that, I like the kind of customize, how much customization you can do here by making use of all these buttons. There are probably some out there that are like, you know what, I wish I could just hit a sport mode, and get like heavier steering and a more responsive throttle with a single press of a button. I guess I could say that there is some validity to that argument, but I still kind of like the, how you can kind of got to do it all yourself. It just adds to the to the character of this vehicle altogether. I mean, it's really hard to find much wrong with it. Yeah, then I mentioned the pricing as well. It's not inexpensive, but again, you know, people are going to pay, people are going to pay and it's priced that way. Uh, you know, I'm splitting hairs here. And if I split them any more than this, the hair is probably going to disappear. Like, they, there's just so much to like about this. It's so supremely and superbly engineered uh, that, you know, as a responsible car reporter, it's my job to look at all aspects of any given vehicle I drive, but I'm going to be very honest with you, it's tough to find much wrong with this 718 Spider. It really is. Finicky roof. Okay, sure, I guess. But, again, it's all kind of part of the deal, right? It speaks to a level of purity when it comes to the 718 Spider that you just don't get when it comes to almost every other sports car these days. This side of a Mazda MX-5, maybe a very base level Mustang, but even that's gonna have drive modes. It just doesn't get any more base than this. And people are gonna constantly, are, are probably going to roll their eyes. What are you talking about? This thing's $130,000 out the door in the car you're driving. You're telling me you're happy you don't have drive modes. You're happy you, you know, have to play with all this stuff all on your own. Yes, yes, I am happy about all that. I have loved the Porsche, Boxster, well, originally Boxster, now 718 Spider. ever since we saw the first one two generations ago. It was such a cool vehicle, such a cool vehicle. It was really, really sought after, and in my book, more so than a 911 cab. More so than a 911 cab. You know, I will disclaim, however, I am not a fan of cabriolets or convertibles in general. I am not vehicles that are also available as a coupe anyway. And while technically this is also available as a coupe, if you count the 718 GT4 or the Cayman GT4 as, as the kind of coupe equivalent of this, that's fine. But this is a vehicle that's been developed from the ground up as a sports car or as a, um, as a convertible. And that speaks volumes to me. And I've always liked the Boxster, I think, because when it first started out life back in 97 or whatever it was, it was a convertible from the get-go. And that worked for me. I never was a fan of the 911 cab ever since I heard that one of the worst handling 911s ever, the 964 era 911 C4 Cabriolet. What's a Cabriolet? I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of off that. I don't, I don't need it, but this is a convertible that's meant to be a convertible, and I like it for that. Between this and the GT4, which I'll admit I haven't driven, without even driving that GT4, I could probably say I choose this. I've driven the older Cayman, the Cayman R. I drove that a few years ago. I still think I would take 
the spider over that vehicle. There's just so much to like here, especially when the sun is out and the air is flowing through your Spring Mountain Raceway hat. Not your hair, my hair is cold. Obviously, that is when this is just so perfect. It's a sense of perfection and bliss that you just get from such a well-engineered car, and it is ultra well engineered. You don't get uh, creaks and rattles over bumps or door gaps like you do even in the 911. I've driven the 911 Cabriolet, the most recent version of it, and you got these creaks and rattles. Remember one over my left shoulder I just couldn't forget, and that's kind of a pet peeve of mine, but here, nothing like that at all. I think it's so firm. I don't even have it in the firmest damper setting. There we go. There are firmer dampers. Again, choose it, do it on your own. This is a very DIY sports car, a very choose your own adventure sports car, and that is fine by me. So, I've got the dampers on firm now, and everything now just moves with such precision, such immediacy. That is what you want from your sports car. This is, as soon as you turn this wonderful Alcantara suited wheel, the front end follows suit, and the rear end just behind that. That is right on this 911 coupe. Well, you don't have this, do you, Mr. 911 coupe? Uh, uh, yeah, it's just so great. Um, and and then, you know, you look out over those kind of pontoon-style front wings there, and that is just another way of adding some specialness to the occasion. This is fantastic. And then, kick it down a couple cobs. Cogs, rather, you've just got such power and a great sound. I've got the loud exhaust button pressed now, of course, of course I do. And it just sounds great. Great response. It's a naturally aspirated motor that gives you perfect response as soon as you tip in on the throttle. I guess I do have to mention something about this transmission. It's geared quite long so that in second gear, you can be doing like 90 kilometers an hour and still have about 3,000 RPM to go before red line. That's if you have the minerals to stay in it until you hit the red line, which point you're probably gonna be doing like 120, which makes going around town a little tougher than those long gears. It's a bit, you know, it's a bit, a bit, it's a bit louder, you know, it revs higher and so on. On track though, it's fantastic. But once you get in sync with better, and it should be mentioned that I've heard it reported by my friends over at the straight pipes that Porsche has actually admitted that, yeah, the, the transmission and the spiders are on the old side. The, the PDK might be the better way to go, might be more in sync than the manual, but uh, I've got that right here and I love it because it's a fantastic uh, shift lever to slot. Uh, the lever action is like a fine, I know it's cliche, but it's so true here, a finely oiled rifle bolt. is the best sports car in the world. Yes, you will find some supercars that you can make an argument for, but those are gonna cost you upwards in Canada of $300,000 for a McLaren or for um, for a uh, an Audi R8, for example. I'd have this over an R8 anyway, so forget it. An Audi R8, for example, or as we get a little bit higher up the echelon there, stuff like a Ferrari 488 and so on. Yeah, you're gonna, those, there's lots of good stuff going there, but this is such a great mix of pricing uh, of styling, of performance, and just of occasion. It's such an occasion to drive this. But that's just what a great car does, a great sports car does. It makes you wear silly race car style jackets and silly race car style shoes and matching socks. And it makes you drop the top on a day that maybe you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily want to. Well, this day is turning out pretty good for some top down motoring. It didn't start out that way, so forget that. It makes you not worry about this weird cup holder system they've got going on here. Who cares? It doesn't matter all that. The stuff you worry about in more luxury vehicles, SUVs and sedans and so on, that doesn't matter so much here. This car rewards you in so many other ways, ways that are, are just probably so much less flash in the pan than a fancy seat massaging gimmick might be. And that's what's so great about this Spider, this 718 Spider. It's, it's just 
it's a it's it is the intangible car in my opinion it is the it's not a car made up of intangibles it is the intangible car and that's why i love it that's why i absolutely love it but it makes me sad doesn't it, it does make me sad because this is now that the 25th anniversary version of the boxer just released this is likely a bit of a siren song for or a, or a swan song i should say for a the naturally aspirated flat six in the porsche world that's the first thing actually the naturally naturally aspirated engine in general the engine in general of the porsche world is coming to a close of electrification on the horizon anyway this is this is probably the last time the next boxster which they'll probably do again but it's going to probably have some derivative of whatever the Taycan is powered by underneath the hood. And that's gonna be, I'm sure, great for performance, but the soul, which is already some people have seen the soul of the box street, you've lost that a bit ever since you switched from a naturally aspirated flat six to a turbo four a couple years ago. And I've driven the new, um, boxer with that four-cylinder turbo motor it's not a bad motor it's a good motor but some would say and i might agree with them that we've lost some of that uh, that intangible kind of feeling of purity when you with the switch to a turbocharged four cylinder. It's great on fuel economy. It's got makes great power, but it doesn't have a lot of character. So already people are saying that with the boxer, what's going to happen when it goes to like an EV assisted powertrain, which is probably what the next one's going to have. And viewers, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe Porsche has already announced something in that vein off the top of my head. I don't know right now, but so it makes me sad. This is this is the end of an era. This one here, this 718 Spider is the end of an era. It's likely the last time we're going to see a naturally aspirated Porsche this side of the GT3. Uh, we're not going to see, uh, I, I can almost guarantee that the next Boxster is not going to come with any kind of a naturally aspirated motor. You might still get a manual transmission, it's possible, uh, but that could be on its way out too. It's just, it's just too bad. And as I drive this now, and as I look down the road, and assuming I'm still doing this work five years down the road, I. I don't know if I'm gonna have this feeling I have right now again. So it does make me sad. It does make me sad a little bit that that we're here now and and this is the now and that's great, but I don't think it's going to be the it's not gonna be the future. We're not gonna have stuff like this going forward. It's just not in the car, it's not what these manufacturers need to do, it's not what governments are asking manufacturers to do. It's electrification all the time now, and I understand why we need to do all that. I, I get that, and I, I appreciate it as well, but that doesn't change the fact that when I return this Porsche in a few days, there's going to be a bit of a void left there for a while, I think, and it's, it's going to be a little bit tough because... You know, it's it's a new day. It's great. It's good to be looking forward and not so much back, but sometimes you want to look back, you know. Because you want the feeling, that romantic feeling of the golden year, of the golden years of cars when it was man and machine and then that's it. And we have that here now, and that's probably why this car is gonna be somewhat of a collector's item going forward, I would imagine. But I don't know how long much longer we're gonna have it for. So I'm glad I got the chance to enjoy Monster Spider before it's too late, before I can't do it anymore. Anyway, on that somewhat sad note, uh, that's the end of my review of the 718 Spider. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. If not, no hard feelings, of course. Uh, look for a uh, story on this vehicle on wheels.ca and other various Star Metro Land properties sometime soon. Um, but until then, thanks for tuning in and sayonara, folks.